Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning here at verse 13. The text reads, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name you shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. But you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the truth that is contained in Scripture. Thank you, Father. Open up our understanding and bless us with wisdom. Yes. Bless us with knowledge. Yes, and may we come out of this with a deeper understanding of what you desire for each and every one of us amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. amen. Praise God. Again, we're coming out of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and we read verses 13 through verse 18. Amen. After the children of Israel was delivered out of the house of bondage. And we know that place was called Egypt. Amen. Amen. God speaks to the prophet Moses to command the children of Israel that they should fear the Lord their God. And if they feared the Lord their God, they would serve him acceptably. Amen. Praise God. Then he says to them in the next verse, he says, you shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. Mm -hmm. Praise God. How many know today that we are living in a world that is populated with idol gods? Yeah. Amen. There are idol gods all around us. Amen. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Amen. Even though that all of these other gods are dumb idols. And I believe that's how the Apostle Paul addressed it over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 when he talked about how the Gentiles worship these dumb idols. Praise God. And what you got to understand here is one of the reasons why God does not want any of his people Worshiping other gods is because when you worship other gods, you're actually worshiping demons. Come on. Amen. Praise God. This is more than a natural thing. It's a spiritual thing. Right. And everybody needs to understand that it is commanded by God to his people that we don't go after other gods. Amen. And there are many other gods that are worship throughout the face of the earth which we must refrain ourselves from. Yes. Amen? Amen? Things that you may not think is a God that is worshipped by people, you will be astounded to know that is exactly what it is in the sight of God. Amen. God will never have any of us exalting anything higher than him. Amen. Let me ask you a question. What is the most important thing in your life? Amen. Praise God. You know, most people with their mouths would say God is. Right. Come on. Amen. But then when you go and examine their life, when you go and look at what they do, you'll find out that God is not the most important thing in their life. Amen. I 
believe it says over in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16 and verse 15, he said, whatsoever is highly esteemed among men, it is an abomination in the sight of God. Amen. And anything that you esteem higher than God has become your God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. When God means more to you than anything, how many know you'll spend time with him? Come on, you'll spend time with him in prayer. You'll spend time with him in the word. Come on, you will spend quality time with him. Because you cannot know a God you don't even spend time with. Hello? We live in a world where many in the church say they know God, but by their actions, they display that they really don't know God. Neither do they spend any time with him. Come on. Praise God. Now the text says here in verse 14 of Deuteronomy chapter 6 that we're not to go after other gods. Are you listening? Amen. Even the apostle John teaches us in chapter 5 in verse 21. He said, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Praise God. I wonder why the Bible is so uh, 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 telling us about the worship of other gods. Come on, did you not know that was God's first commandment that he gave the prophet Moses when he went up into the mountain to, to, to appear before him? The very first commandment he gave him in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3 was, he said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Praise God. This is how serious God is about us having other gods in our longer than they ever take time out to read the scriptures. Ah, oh, y'all getting quiet on me. Praise God. People get excited over the Kansas City Chiefs and they never leaped. They never shot it. They never gave God a Holy Ghost dance. But yet they jumping and shouting over some men in a red and white suit just because they made a touchdown. worshiping other gods. And the Bible says these other gods are the gods of the people. And the people that he's referring to are the heathens. People who have no covenant with God. Them that have not been born again. Them who do not have a relationship with the Father and His Son. These are the people that he's referring to. Now let me tell you something. All the gods that the heathen worship are nothing but dumb idols. I believe the song saying, amen, they worship gods. They have eyes and can't see. They have ears and can't hear. And they have a mouth and they can't even speak. Yet many bow down and worship these gods. And they're not even gods at all. They just idols of wood and stone and whatever else you want to make your God out of. God 
hearts of the people which are round about you. Hmm? He said, don't you mix with them. Don't you mix with them. Because notice, they ain't mixing with you. They ain't coming into your mix and bowing before the God of Israel that you worship. But what do we do? We leave outside of the perimeters of God's word and find ourselves bowing down to other gods. But yet we seem to can't get the heathen to repent and come in behind the veil where the glory of God is. Come on somebody. And this is why God told his people, don't you mix with them. Don't you mix with them. Don't you dare do it. Didn't he tell Solomon not to do it? He told him in 1 Kings chapter 11, he said, Solomon, the son of David, don't you go into those strange women and don't you let them come into you. He said, you know why I'm telling you this? He said, because they're going to turn your heart from me. They're going to turn your heart from me. And what happened? He disobeyed God. He went into those strange women. Those strange women he allowed to come in him. And the Bible says he began to worship their gods. He began to set up shrines for their gods so that they might worship them. Are you listening to me? This is why he tells you these things. You can't mix with the heathen. You can't go into their stuff and think it ain't going to affect you. Come on. Praise God. He said again, you shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people which are round about you. Verse 15, he said, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God. Oh my God. Did y'all see that? God is a jealous God. Now everybody in here got a little experience when it comes to jealousy. Come on, you've had a wife that may have made you jealous. You may have had a husband that made you jealous. And before you got any sense, amen, to marry anybody, you probably had a boyfriend or a girlfriend in times past that made you jealous. Can I ask you a question? How did they make you feel when they were making you jealous? You didn't like it, did you? It didn't make you feel good, did it? Come on, somebody. Well, can I ask you something? I want you to think about this. Amen. What about you? They say you are in covenant with God. That you have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. And yet, look, look at us today. We making God jealous. You want to know how? Because we flirting with the world. Y'all getting quiet. We flirting around. Amen. We flirting around with the world. Y'all getting quiet here. Hallelujah. Now let me ask you this question. How does God feel about you flirting? How does he feel about that? The Bible says he's a jealous God. Now you don't want to make God jealous to you. No. no. That doesn't signify that you love him when you're walking around making him jealous. Going after other gods. Flirting around with this ungodly world. Didn't he tell you in James chapter 4? He said, if any man have friendship with the world, he's the enemy of God. He called them adulterers and adulteresses. Who was he talking to? He was talking to the church. He was talking to the bride of Christ. They were flirting around with the world. And God became very jealous. Come on. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God. Huh? Amen. Let me give you a good definition for the word jealous. Now, I really don't have to give you this definition because you know what it is. You've experienced it on multiple occasions within your own personal life. Praise God. The word jealous means intolerant of unfaithfulness. Uh-huh. Intolerant of unfaithfulness. Jealous also means feeling angry or bitter because of something or someone you do not have. Hello, praise God. 
someone that you love and you adore, and you see them stepping outside of the scope of your relationship, that will make you jealous. Come on. Amen. Praise God. That's what jealousy is. That's what jealousy is. And you don't want to make God jealous. Because the scripture says, For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Look at that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So in other words, jealousy kindles God's anger and causes him to bring his wrath upon you. Hello. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Is that what the book said? Yes. Now I want you to get this now because everybody needs to understand God is not going to tolerate his covenant people flirting around with the world of sin, bowing down before other idols and making him jealous. We got to remember that the New Testament church is the bride of Christ. And every one of us that have been baptized into the church, you are a part of the bride. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. And the last thing that we want to do is make the one we say we love jealous. Amen. Come on. Because jealousy stirs up God's anger and causes him to bring his wrath upon a people. And the scripture says he will destroy them from off the face of the earth. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 34 says, For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. Look at that. Hallelujah. Did you not know that's true in the natural? As well as in the spiritual? Praise God. Now if man can become jealous... And, be, and execute vengeance. Yes. Hallelujah. Then what about the almighty God? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I come to tell you that his wrath will be more tolerable than a natural man that becomes enraged yes. when the one that he loves begins to flirt on him. Yes. Come on. Amen. You understand? Amen. Does this make sense? Yes. God don't want his people being flirtatious. That's right. We always want that world out there, don't we? Yeah. Don't you know you're flirting? Yeah. Don't you know that you are stepping into the realm of the wicked yes. that worship other gods? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And I come to tell you there are many gods that are worshipped by the heathen. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said in Corinthians, he said, though there be God's many and Lord's many, he said, unto us there is but one God and one Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Praise God. And that's the one that we worship. So when you're talking about God, you got to make sure that you mention Jesus Christ. Come on. Because the Buddhists talk about God. And the Hindus talk about God. Right. And there are so-called Christians that talk about God, but they ain't talking about the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's why the Apostle Paul said there be God's many. And when people talking about God, I got to make sure that you're talking about the one who had a son. Come on. And his son was called Jesus Christ. Hello, somebody. Jesus. Now every believer must understand that God wants you to be just like him. Somebody say, well how is God? Did you not know that he's faithful? Yes. Yes. Amen. I believe Jeremiah the prophet said over in the Lamentations chapter 3 Amen. He said, great is his faithfulness. God is faithful. And did you not know he desires that you be faithful to? Yes. God wants a faithful bride. He wants a virtuous
virtuous woman. He want a holy church, a sanctified people. Come on, even a people that love him and they will never step out on him. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Now, if you sisters want that in the natural, come on, when you are part of the body of Christ, you are a member of the bride, and you can't be doing things that you don't uh, you don't uh, want some man to do to you. That's right. Come on. Amen. When you in Christ and Christ dwells in you, you got to be faithful. You got to be faithful. Praise God. And brothers, that go for you too. You got to be faithful. Because when you're born again, you too are a part of the body of Christ. You are a member of God's pride. Hello, somebody. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, he said, Be faithful unto death. Yes. And I'll give you a crown of life. Amen. God will never settle for anything less than his bride being faithful. Amen. He's not coming back for a whorish woman. That's right. He's coming back for a virtuous woman. Amen. Come on. He's coming Amen. back for a holy church. Amen. Not a backslidden sinful people. <laughs> he ain't coming back for that time. Hello, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So one thing we got to remember Amen. is that Amen. we learn to honor God Amen. for who he is. Amen. You're not to allow any man or any woman, Amen. you're not to allow your, your job or anything to separate you from the love of God, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Come on. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. You got to remember the devil is always to separate you from God. Didn't it tell you that in Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2? He said your sin has separated you between God and yourself. Are you listening? Amen. Now watch this. It's the same way when you got a husband and a wife and yet uh, the man or the woman allow another man or another woman to come between their marriage and cause them to divorce. Come on, an honorable man or an honorable woman will never let any man or any other woman come between them and their covenant spouse. Well, it's the same way spiritually. Come on, you ain't gonna let sin come between you and God. Come on, you ain't gonna let fornication, drug smoking, drinking, partying, hello somebody. You ain't gonna let nothing come between you and your father. which he will. Yes. We have to be faithful to him. That's Amen. right. Come on. Amen. Everybody knows the golden rule, don't they? In Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 12, it says, as you would have others do unto you, you're to do also yeah. unto That's others. Right. Come on. Amen. 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 Now you gotta understand, Jesus was speaking from the throne of God. Because God will never tell us to do anything that he himself would not do. Praise God. And as you have would have others do unto you, that is how you would do unto others. Are you listening to me? Praise God. If you wouldn't have your wife flirting on you, you ain't going to be out flirting around on her. Come on, somebody. Because God ain't going to be flirting on you, and you should be flirting around on him. Y'all getting quiet, praise God. Come on, can God get a praise in this house? In Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Does this make sense? Amen. I want everybody to get this because we got to understand that God is a very jealous God. Amen. And he will not tolerate his bride flirting around with the world of sin and bowing down to other gods, which are not even gods at all. Amen. Come on. Amen. Praise God. And this is why this is why you gotta understand 
that when God calls us to salvation, he also calls us to sanctification. So we have to keep ourselves set apart unto God. We can't mix with the world. Come on, we can't worship the gods that they worship. We can't live in sin that they live in. Are you listening to me? He's called us out of that darkness to come into his marvelous light that we might show forth his praise. And how many know that God wants praise? He wants you to praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him in the evening. And in the midnight hour. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my night. Come on, somebody. God is a jealous God. Yes, he is. And he will not tolerate our flirtatiousness and our unfaithfulness. Now, thank God that he's merciful. He's willing to give us another chance if we repent. Come on. If we repent, he's willing to give us another chance. Praise God. But how many know you can't keep taking God's grace for granted? You can't take his grace for granted. Praise God. Because the text says that if we continue to commit this offense against heaven, amen, God's anger would be stirred up and he would execute his wrath and destroy us from off the face of the earth. Now, you know you can't afford that. You can't afford that, praise God. You can't afford to put yourself in that kind of a position whereby you will eventually lose your soul for all of eternity. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many know that if you're going to be faithful, you got to be faithful all the way around? In, in the natural and in the spiritual. Come on. You can't be faithful to your wife or to your husband, but you cheating on God all the time. Oh, y'all getting quiet on that. Cheating on God. Praise his holy name. See, y'all don't want to go there with me. Because sometimes, you know, we don't want him to cheat on me. We don't want her to cheat on me and all those different things. But how many relate that to spiritually? Because I think people are out of touch when it comes to what they say. They have relationship with God, but they cheating on them all the time. Amen. To me, that's hypocrisy. I don't want my wife cheating on me. I don't want my husband cheating on me, but yet you cheating on God. Hello? But you say you love him. You say you have a relationship with him. You say your sins are under the blood, but you cheat. I don't, I don't think people relate that part. I think they take that part out and they never look at it because the devil has blinded their minds. And that's why they can't see the forest from the trees. You understand? That's why the apostle John or the apostle James rather stated it. In chapter 4, he said, you adulterers and adulteresses. He wasn't talking about, amen, his, God's people committing natural adultery. He was talking about spiritual adultery. Yeah. Many in the church, they were flirting around with the world of sin. And God said they were committing adultery against him. Amen. Huh? Amen. Let's read that real quick. Oh, in James chapter 4. Praise God. Because everybody got to understand, if you're going to be saved in the end, you got to be faithful unto God. You can't have other gods. You can't be exalting your job above God, your children above God, your husband or your wife above God. You can't be exalting the Kansas City Chiefs or any sports organization above God. Everything else is more important than God. It's more important than Jesus Christ. You just fit, you just fit him in, you know, wherever I can get him in there. Praise God. You are in idolatry. Are you listening to me? Because you've esteemed something or someone higher than the one that created you. Come on. Praise God. In James chapter 4, I want you to look at this. Listen to the apostle as he writes under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he says this to the saints. He says here, 
Let's start here at verse 1. He said, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? He said, You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. Verse 4. Then he calls this out. He says to the church, you adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now did I write that? Is that in the book? That's why the Apostle John brings it out in 1 John 2, 15 through 17. He said, love not the world. Because everybody has to remember that the world system has a God that they worship. Somebody said, well, who is this God that the world system worships? His name is Satan. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it said, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel of Christ should shine unto them. The God of this world is Satan the devil. And this is why it is preposterous for anyone that professes the name Jesus Christ to go back out into the world and begin to flirt around with sin. Come on somebody. God will never have his people flirting around with the world. And let me tell you something. Since Satan is the God of the, this world, he's the one, praise God, that is always trying to lure you right back in his bosom. That's why he will flirt with you and have you flirting back with him. And for you know you're laying in his lap, he's stroking your brow, and now your anointing is gone. Your relationship with God has been severed because of sin. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's what he said. Amen. You adulterers and adulteresses. He was talking about spiritual adultery in this text. Because he was talking to the saints of God in, amen, in this verse. And he said that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. The word enmity means hostility or hatred toward God. Right. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now who is he talking to in this text again? He's talking to the beloved. He's not talking to sinners on the street. He's talking to them that are in covenant with him through the blood of Christ. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. This is an epistle written to the church. Come on. Amen. 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 Because we can look back in the first century when this was written, and we can relate it today because we have many in our churches today that say they are born again, and yet they're doing the same thing. They're flirting around with the world, calling anybody faithful. I didn't say nobody. God always got a remnant of people that is faithful, that's living holy, and that's a shunning the very appearance of evil. But what I'm trying to show you is there are many people in the church that are not faithful. They flirting around with the world. Come on. Everything the world doing, the church is doing. We're supposed to be a set apart people. Come on. We ain't supposed to be sitting back with our, our eyes dull and our face frowned up because we, we can't enjoy our flesh right along with the rest of the world. Come on, somebody. I told y'all, if you're going to walk with God, you have to pay a price. Come on, if you don't have a if you have a relationship with God through Christ Jesus, you're going to have to pay a price. You're going to have to lose your life in this world. You didn't see Jesus doing none of this stuff that we do today, and we're supposed to be his bride. Jesus didn't mix with the world. He loved them that are in the world. He came to die for the sins of the world. When Jesus saves you, he brings you out of the world of sin and into the realm of and you can keep yourself what? Set apart from the world so that you can live a holy life before God and bring honor and glory to his name. Come on. You can't live a double life. You can't live a double life. Hello. We can't be James Bond in the church. Double agents. Come on. 
But let me tell you something. If you're going to be saved, you got to divorce the world. And you got to come out. You got to get in the face of Jesus. And call on him. Until he fills you with the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Somebody help me preach it here. When you love him, you don't want to make him jealous. You don't want to make him jealous. You don't want to shame him. Come on now. You don't want to bring a reproach on his name. But you want to love him and honor him and praise him. Come on with your whole heart. Come on somebody. Are you listening to me? That's what a true bride would do. The Bible says in Proverbs that a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. Hmm? See, a virtuous church is a crown upon the head of her Lord. You know why? Because she submits to him. She honors him. And she's the one that can truly call him Lord. Hello? Because she obeys him. Come on, are you listening? So you got a lot of, let, let, me, let me just bring it back to the natural. So you can understand the spirituality of what I'm trying to bring. You got a lot of women today, praise God, that say, you know, this is my husband. They love saying this is my husband. They love saying those types of things. This is my husband. This is my baby. And all of that. Praise God. Now he's supposed to be the head of the house, right? He's supposed to be the head of the house. But praise God. Amen. But the, but that, that certain women can't submit to their husbands. Fuss with them. Argue with them. Won't do what he tell them to do. Come on. I ain't talking about he telling you to do something wrong. I'm talking about when he telling you to do something right. Come on. Women won't do it. And a woman like that, she's not really submitted to her husband. She's not a crown upon his head. The Bible says, amen, a woman that maketh the shame, she's rottenness to her husband's bones. That woman has testified in her heart. Jesus, you ain't my Lord. Now, we the bride, right? You ain't my Lord. You ain't my head. You can't tell me what to do. I do what I want to do. And that's why these people live the way they do in the church. Because Jesus is not their Lord. He's not their God. He's not the one they serve. Are you listening to me? Praise God. That's why you see it the way you see it. Why the Apostle Paul brings that? No man speaking by the Spirit calling Jesus a curse. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3. But no man can say that Jesus Christ is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Hello. God wants a faithful bride. Yes, he does. Hmm? And it's impossible to be faithful when you don't submit to the Word. Because see, the word teaches us a lot of things. We, don't, we won't submit to it. We won't obey it. We won't do anything. We just think, oh, it doesn't matter. God doesn't care about that. Who are you to despise the word of God and tell him that his word don't matter? Right. Come on. Anything God says, it has purpose. It has meaning. It's a reason for it. He's not telling you just to tell him. Come on. I'm trying to help you today. Glory to God. And that's why folks need to stop fighting God and trying to come up with an excuse and trying to form their own opinion. Well, I don't think nothing's wrong with this. Well, God never asked you. He never asked you what you think. Come on. The Bible says in the book of Timothy, he said to the only wise God. Now, if God is all wise, praise God. Why do he need your opinion?
You don't want to make them jealous. Because love doesn't do that. That's right. Love honors, it respects, it exalts, Amen. it's Amen. faithful. Yes. Huh? Yes. Oh, you being flirtatious? Batting your eyes like the scripture says? In Isaiah chapter 3, how the women had, who had the wanton eyes. Huh? You know how people give you the look? They try to get your attention. They try to attract you to them. Huh? You've seen that. Yes, you have. Praise God, they're flirting. Are you hearing me? Say to the devil is using them to reel you in. So people keep forgetting that the devil uses whoever is available to him to reel you right into his bosom. Come on. Praise God. We got a lot of flirtatiousness in the world today. The devil don't care if you married to Christ. Come on, he don't care if you got a relationship with God. He gonna try to come between you and Christ and get you to come over there where he is. Cause see, the devil wanna be your sugar daddy. He wanna be your sugar mama. He wanna be your sugar baby. Y'all getting quiet, praise God. Are you listening to me? The devil said, yeah, you can go in the church. But guess what? You still got a sugar daddy on the side. You see it. Satan, your sugar daddy. Come on, somebody. And people think, because I still go to church. Yeah, but you got a sugar daddy when you ain't in the church. Amen. You understand? Amen. Football game. 
Let them go to a basketball game. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with it. Well, says who? Come on. Did you not know God is a jealous God? God said they don't even praise me like that. You think he don't get jealous? Folk high-fiving each other, shouting and screaming. When's the last time you gave God a Shabbat?
everybody screaming their name. Do you think God would have his people mixed up in that? No. We don't even scream Jesus' name. Set apart. That's right. Preparing right. ourselves because the bridegroom is coming. Amen. And we can't have any spots, wrinkles, or blemishes on our wedding garment. Because Jesus is coming back for a holy bride. A bride that ain't been flirting around on, cheating on. Stepping out on them. <laughs> Hello. Amen. Glory to God. A bride that ain't got a sugar daddy on the side. Amen. A bride who ain't with somebody the night before she decides she's going to marry the brother. Amen. Come on. How many people have done that? Amen. Got with their ex. Amen. Come on now. The night before they wed. Hello somebody. Amen. Come on. Y'all live in this wicked world Amen. the same way as I do. And you see people do that. You get married to this fella, but uh, you hooking up with your ex the night before yep. for one last rendezvous. Right. Mm -hmm. He ain't coming back for a bride like that. No, we got to be faithful. Amen. Amen. Honorable. Amen. We got to be a crown on his head. Amen. Faithful. Hello, somebody. Amen. You still want to be faithful? Amen. See the price you're going to have to pay? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. When, when we do weddings, what do we say? Huh? Would you take this man and this woman as your lovely wedded spouse? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Forsaking all others. Amen. That's, what, that's, that's, that's how this is. That's right. When you get in the Holy Ghost Church, you got to forsake all right. of the gods. Right. You got to come out of your sin. Or you're not going to be faithful. You're going to be cheating in the next room. Yeah. Hmm? Amen. Yes, you are. Amen. Yes, you are. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hello. Amen. Amen. You got to delete all of the accounts. Yeah. Them dating sites. Yeah, you got to go through them. Delete them all. Don't, don't resurrect them. Delete them. Amen. You got to delete them all. Get rid of all of them. Because if not, you're going to tap right back in. Amen. Huh? Amen. And the devil will make sure somebody will inbox you ten times. And you get all intrigued. I wonder who this is. I've been trying to kill with her toe. And now you're stepping back out on your husband or your wife. You understand me? Amen. Amen. We can't flirt with the world. When you love God, you, you're not going to make them jealous. Amen. Because you understand that's dishonorable. Yeah. You're breaking your vow. Yeah. And not only that, God's anger becomes kingdom. And he said he will execute his wrath and bring judgment. And destroy you from off the face of the earth. Right. How many can afford that? No. Come on, we can't afford that. No. We can't afford to lose our souls over a fling. Amen. Come on, Amen. say that with me. We can't afford to lose our souls over a fling. Your relationship with God should mean them. That should mean more than you than anything. Our relationship with God. And I ain't let no man, no woman, not even my job. Look how much money I make. Huh? I'm going to honor God on my job. But I can be so caught up in my job to the point I forget about my responsibilities. I forget about my responsibilities. I forget my responsibilities as a father, as a mother. Hello? I will forget my responsibility as a being a part of the bride of Christ. Amen. You don't do your wifely duties anymore. Yeah. Come up the bride. Amen. Huh? Amen. I'm trying to help you now. Amen. But we have to keep God first and foremost. Right. And when you keep God first and foremost, 
then everything in your life would fall into place. That's right. That's right. But you have to keep him at the center of your life. Yes. Right. You don't revolve God around your life. Right. No. In my life, everything revolves around God. Right. And if it ain't of God, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't sticking around. That's right. It's going to be cast out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Your life has to be centered around him. Right. Not you sit, you moving God around your life or whatever you can fit him in. Right. That's not a relationship. No, it's not. No, it's he's not. not. He's not your God. That's right. Huh? Amen. Because God the Father will never put up with us. Making him second and third. Or, you know, whenever I got time for him. He would never do that. No. He'll never be a part of a person's life like that. No. Jesus died and was resurrected. The scripture says in Colossians 1 that he might be the what? Firstborn from the dead, that he might have the preeminence. First place. Yes. The superior, the superiority in your life. Yes. He wants to be first. Amen. That's why he's the head. Amen. He's first Amen. in your life. Amen. Nothing else matters. Right. You put Jesus first, everything else falls into place. Right. When you keep him in that place. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Everything revolves around him. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands 